Good morning, Christ United Methodist Church. Where is the rest of the congregation at 11 o'clock? I know you guys have like joined the choir, but anyway, we'll have to find them and hog time and get them in here. Hey, welcome if you're here with us live. If you're watching and you should be here at 11 o'clock, we miss you. Come back. We want to spend time with you. Um, we want to spend some time singing today and listening to God's word and praying. Our entire service is done in an attitude of prayer. I hope you um, find today's service an opportunity to connect with God and, um, and renew that connection if necessary. Let's pray. Father, in the midst of the busyness that is our lives, in the midst of the stress and the struggle and the chaos, we find ourselves here. We find ourselves in your presence, ready to sing praise to your name, ready to hear from your word, ready to connect with you through the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we pray that all that we do today would be a blessing to you. All that we do today would strengthen and nourish us for whatever is next on your agenda. We ask this in the name of the Christ. Amen. Welcome to worship. Good morning. Hey, the uh, Psalm 108 says that God's love is higher than the heavens and his faithfulness reaches to the sky. So let us proclaim God's faithfulness today, his goodness. Let's proclaim him as God. As we sing together, let us stand, allow this song to bring us into that atmosphere of uh, worship and God's greatness today. would surmise that some of you came out of a difficult week perhaps 
maybe a, a difficult day or an experience. For some, it's been a, a better than usual week. We thank God for his place in, in every circumstance of life. He is God, and he is with you in all those places. Today we proclaim a God that is above all, above all that is uh, threatening to pull us down, all that is causing us to feel unworthy before God, all that makes us feel like this world is out of control. God, through Jesus, is above all. And he proved that up there and with an empty tomb. Above all powers, above all kings, above all nature and all that first verse again. I'd like the ladies to begin. Above all powers, above all kings, above all nature and all created things. Okay, how about it, guys? Let's sing the next part. Above all wisdom and all the ways of man.
today on a level playing field, friends. We are in need of God, and he made a way for us. So with that, let's greet one another in the love and the knowing that we are worthy because of Jesus. Greet one another now. Father God, our heart does yearn for you. It yearns for you in the morning when we awake. It yearns for you in the busyness of the day. It yearns for you at night 
as we look back and look forward and wander about tomorrow. Lord, our heart yearns for you. Fill us, Father. Show us. Heal us. Amen. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my Let me share with you um, some prayer concerns this morning as we turn to a time of prayer. We made the announcement last week that Dick Way had passed away um, last Saturday evening, Sunday morning. Today is a visitation in the funeral, 1 to 2.30 in our Heritage Hall. We're going to have a time of just spending time with the family. There will be some cookies and some beverage to help lubricate that conversation. So um, come and spend a little time with the family, and at 2.30, we will do a funeral here at the church. The choir will be here to sing, and um, we've got some special music planned as well. Also this week, Lisa Silipek's mom, Sandy Hovis, passed away. Um, the viewing is at Hartle Funeral Home today from 1 to 3, and from 5 to 7. Then at 7 o'clock, I'll be conducting a funeral there 
for that family. Be holding up Pat and see our man as Pat is at home from the hospital but still recovering from a fractured pelvis and unable to do almost anything. Walk with them and, uh, and pray with them, pray for them. Also be praying for Sam's hand. When does he go, Kim, to have that looked at? Tuesday. During staff time. Oh, he'll be here and then leave. Okay. Right, we could take it off for him at staff. I, Nick, you got tools, right? Yeah, we could totally do that. <laughs> well, that's a willing participant there, Greg. <laughs> so we'll be praying that Sam's hand is healed so that he can get um, it loosened up and get back to playing guitar like he loves. Um, be praying, if you will, for jurisdictional conference. Now, you all know what that is, right? Yeah, I didn't think so. So every year we have church conference, and this year it's going to be this coming Thursday at First Church at 7. Every year we have annual conference, which used to meet at Grove City College, now meets in Erie. And then every four years, the general church across the globe meets at general conference. In between there, every four years, we have jurisdictional conference. We are in the Northeast jurisdiction, which is from us up to New England states. Their job is to elect and assign bishops. Not an easy and not an unconsequential task. So they start Tuesday. There are nine nominees. There are two bishops they need to elect. And that will be a process of discernment. Um, those are always interesting times, especially in light of what's been going on in the church. For me personally, I'm invested because my best friend's wife has been nominated. And if she gets elected, he will no longer be as close as Bakerstown. He will probably be Syracuse, New York, or farther. So we'll see how he gets back for Covenant Group every month. That's not my problem. That's his. And we expect him to be there. So that's the way that'll work. Um, he will be taking, if that happens, he'll be taking leave of absence from being a pastor. And he'll be coaching people. So we'll see. Hey, be praying for our students. Um, there was a funeral Friday in Pittsburgh at a church for a shooting victim that was a younger person and um, there was a shooting outside the church at the funeral be praying that God could work in those situations could bring some peace some resolution some justice and pray for our school there were a couple incidents um, this week at, at our high school that we could be praying about but the one is that a a couple of kids got in a fight, and the one kid decided it would be a good idea to go for the resource officer's gun. Not a good plan. So be praying about that. There are people in pain, and when people are in pain, they make dumb decisions. And so we need to pray that God would intervene, and, and that if he wants to use us, he can. Um, you can also be praying uh, several adults, especially some adult males from our community, have been asked to come into the school district, into the school buildings, and, uh, and kind of represent, especially in the elementary schools, and be a positive role model for those kids. So several of the men from this church have been asked to do that. So we're praying that that goes well. All right, let's pray. Father God, it is so easy to get stuck between the news and what we hear about from friends between our own health and the health of those we love father it's easy for us to get stuck in that place where all we see is chaos and we forget that you're a god of order a god of love a god of grace a god of healing a god of wholeness and of hope Father, we pray today that we would see more of you and less of the chaos around us. May we represent more of you and represent less chaos to those around us. We pray, Father, for those who are struggling with loss and, and pray that your peace and your comfort would be with them. We pray for those that are struggling with their health or healing or getting ready to undergo surgery. And we just pray, Lord, that you would work in bodies, that you would work through doctors and nurses to promote wholeness. 
We pray for those, Father, who are struggling emotionally. We pray that they would find an empathic witness to hear their story, to help them on a journey to wholeness. And Lord, we pray for the violence that we see around us. Lord, step in. Bring understanding. Bring tolerance. Bring peace. Father, walk with Sam on Tuesday as he goes to the doctor. May his hand be completely healed. May he soon be able to do the things he loves once again. And Father, walk with those at jurisdictional conference that as they listen, they would hear your voice above everything else, above special interests, above the voice of other delegates. Would they hear you above all else? Now, Father, as we open your word, we pray that you would pour into us understanding and grace that we may see you, be drawn to you and to beauty and desire to be more like you every day. We ask all these things, Father, in the awesome and powerful name of Jesus the Christ, and we pray the prayer that he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If you have your Bibles with you, um, grab those. If you don't, there should be one in the pew rack in front of you. We're going to turn to the book of Romans, the third chapter. As soon as I get my computer to do what I want it to, there we go. Romans chapter 3. We're going to start in verse 21. Here's what God's word says. But now apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been made known to which the law and the prophets testify. This righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference between Jew and Gentile, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of his blood. To be received by faith, he did this to demonstrate his righteousness, because in his forbearance, he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. He did it to demonstrate his righteousness at the present time, so as to be just and one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. This is the end of the reading of God's word. I don't know about you, but I really like fall. I'm not sure it's my favorite holiday, but it, or favorite season, but it's, um, it's up there. I think it, it gained popularity for me when I lived in Warren County for about a decade, and, and I was often driving through the Allegheny National Forest. That completely spoiled me. It'd be nothing to come off the hill and lander some days, and be headed down into Warren and, and see the valley of the Conowongo Creek just filled with fog and all the trees around it ablaze with color. I would just be mesmerized. It reminded me of a story that retired Bishop Bayshore used to tell of being a bishop in the New England Annual Conference. And one Sunday, he and his wife Carolyn were traveling from place to place to do some speaking engagements, and he said every time they would go around the bend, the fall colors are more beautiful than the last bend. And he said the whole trip, they just went, wow, 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 the whole way to their next destination. Amazing. I've begun to associate beauty, real beauty, with what I see in the fall. Now, I must confess, there's parts of fall that 
I'm a little less comfortable with, namely that part that means there's an impending winter just around the corner. Now, don't get me wrong, I like snow. I'm a big fan of snow blowing, ask anybody who lives on Aspen Street. I also like to sled ride on occasion. But I get tired of being cold. I get tired of being cooped up. I get tired of always having to check the weather before I go any place. In fact, Toby's considering going to school in Rochester, New York. And I told him, I said, if you go there, we will have to make sure you have an all-wheel drive car. And if you're traveling in the wintertime, you will have to have a sleeping bag in the car, extra food in the car, heavy clothes in the car, and never let the tank go below a half a tank of gas. And he said, why? I said, because you don't understand lake effect snow. One minute, it's fine. The next minute, you're in three feet of snow. And you don't leave for days. To which a guy told us a story last night of going to Rochester one time for a business trip. He said, in the morning, I went into the meeting, and there was not a flake of snow on the ground. I come out there three feet. We didn't leave for days. Yep, that's lake effect. But let me tell you something else I've learned about fall and the changing of the leaves. Do you realize that leaves have a variety of pigments all the time? It's always present in the leaves. But the dominant pigment, pigment in spring and summer, the green pigment, comes from the influx of chlorophyll, the chemical the plants use for photosynthesis to turn sunlight into energy for the plants. They need that chlorophyll to survive. So all spring and all summer, that's what we see, the green of chlorophyll. It's not that the colors aren't there. The beauty of them is simply hidden. This is a place that I'm kind of fond of, although I've only visited once. This is Falling Water, or also called the Kaufman House, by famed architect Frank Lloyd Wright. He built it for the Kaufman family, who loved this piece of property and loved that waterfall and had a vision that the house would be located about where the photographer is, and they would be able to look at that waterfall. But Frank Lloyd Wright had another idea, and he built the house in Bear Run right on top of the waterfall. It's an amazing scene. You're down in this valley, the, the driveway lined with rhododendron. Sharon and I got to visit there about 25 years ago on our honeymoon, and we were just mesmerized. I'd studied it in, um, in art history class, but had never been there. The beauty of this house is just undeniable. Now, I don't really like their swimming pool. It's spring water fed, so it's like freezing cold. Who thinks that's a good idea? Not me. But as beautiful as falling water is in the summer, then God turns on his beauty in the fall. Once the days become cooler and shorter, the beauty of falling water is transformed into this mesmerizing scene as the chlorophyll is slowly reabsorbed by the tree and less is produced in preparation for the leaves to fall off to preserve energy during the winter. When all of that happens, all of a sudden, this beauty that was hidden, this beauty that was there all the time but hidden by the chlorophyll is all of a sudden noticeable. And we see that beauty in the changing of the leaves every fall. You see, chlorophyll has been hiding that beauty all summer long. It's been masking it so that we couldn't see it until fall. So the beauty that we see in the summer forest is nothing compared with the beauty we get to observe in the forest in the fall. How pretty it is. Well, there's another fall we talk about that's a little different. It's the fall of the human experience, the fall of humanity, when we engaged in sinful action instead of making something more beautiful, we actually made it less beautiful. You see, God created us, humanity, to be sinless, to live forever. In that state, we were amazing, mystifying, overwhelmingly beautiful. In fact, God called it very good. When I do weddings, I often turn to the second chapter of Genesis, and I read the story of the creation of woman. The text says this, 
Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man, and the man said, and then it goes on with this really nice poetic piece, this is now bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh, yeah. I don't think that's what happened at all. I think God created a woman and brought her to the man. Adam had just named all the animals in the animal kingdom, and there was nothing that compared to him. And all of a sudden, he sees Eve standing there, and he says, Wow! Then he might have said, this is now bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. She should be called woman before she was taken out of man. But I'm sure at first he was completely amazed by her beauty. The text goes on to say the man and his wife were both naked and they felt no shame. That's beauty. But then this fall thing happens. You see, we start out like this, with everything in harmony. In the garden, there is no death or dying. There is no sin. There is no shame. There's no crying or regret. Humans are charged with tending the garden, caring for the creatures, living in relationship with God and with one another. But then something happens. Sin happens, known as the fall. And sin, like chlorophyll, hides the beauty of our experience. We go very quickly from the beauty of the garden to the starkness of the expulsion. God had to make coverings to hide our nakedness that we now noticed. And God had to send us out of the garden so we didn't partake of the tree of life and be stuck in that fallen state for eternity. But God made a promise as we were leaving the garden that one day God would rescue us from our lack of beauty through the seed of woman, the one we know as Jesus. You see, sin was busy hiding the beauty after the fall. Now, some of you are probably thinking, wait a minute, Pastor, I wasn't in the garden. I didn't eat the forbidden fruit. Why am I being lumped in with all humanity in the fall. Well, let's go back to the text that we started with from Romans 3, 23. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. You see, when humanity fell, each of us inherited this corrupted nature, this bent towards sin. Each of us, therefore, is guilty of sin, of hiding beauty. But there is good news, because that sentence does not end with a period. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, comma, and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. That's good news. Why is it good news? Because even though we have each sinned, therefore causing beauty and creation to be hidden, we each are justified by the blood of Christ through salvation. And I'm not sure why it is, but we can make the simplest things complicated. Trusting in Christ is not that complicated. It's as easy as ABC, and you've all learned that. The A stands for agree with God that you need his grace. Yep, I'm a sinner. At some point in life, you and I have done plenty of things we shouldn't have done and have hidden beauty. B, believe that Christ died for our sins, that that was his purpose in coming, that God rescued us and offers that grace. And C, confess to God that you want to trust in that grace to save you. Tell somebody of that decision. It's that simple. And beauty begins to be restored. You see, once sin is no longer the last word, then God sends the Holy Spirit within us to begin to work out of us this sin nature. There's always a remnant that hangs out in us until that day we will be with God. But in the meantime, beauty begins to trickle back in. That's why Scripture calls us to obedience. Obedience and surrender to the Holy Spirit is mostly so that we can begin to live more and more like God called us to. A life of beauty. It's as though we are living in the green of summer. But then when we realize that we need God, all of a sudden our life becomes turbocharged. And beauty begins to come out. As beautiful as this is, I cannot imagine what it's going to be like to be in glory. Where there is no sin, there is no suffering, there is no pain, there is no crying. 
To be sure, sinless beauty comes only in heaven. And although I'm anxious to get there, I've got a lot that I want to do between now and then. For some of us, sinless beauty may be only a few days away or a few months away or a few years away or maybe decades away. But all of that is temporary. Because one day, you and I will find ourselves in glory in a whole new experience. This week, as Sam and I were meeting with some folks from the Way family, we got talking about Tish and Dick. Tish passed about a year and a half ago. And we said, boy, can you imagine when they got to see each other again? They'd been married a long time, but now not only are they back together, but they're back together without any ailments, without any sin, without any regret, without anything standing between them. Kind of reminds me of the way grooms, who usually stand here, look when their bride comes through that door. I love it when a photographer's here and spins around and gets a picture of their face. It's not like the groom hasn't seen the bride before, but all of a sudden they see them in a whole new way. As their spouse. In all their beauty. What's that going to be like for us? How amazing it will be to be with God in glory and to have none of our beauty hidden by sin, but to see it the way God designed it. I hope to see you there because I hope you get a chance to see what I'm supposed to be like, not what I'm actually like. Because try as I might, there are still parts of me that are full of chlorophyll and hiding some of the beauty. Because we each have sin within us. So fall is not just a season where beauty is revealed. Fall is also a reality where beauty is hidden. And the more we step into the presence of God, the more we allow the Holy Spirit to to have rule and reign in our lives, the more beauty comes out again and again and again. We see it when we serve meals to those in need. We see it when we connect with children in Sunday school or the toddler room or the youth group or the young adult group, and we watch them transformed by the love that we pour into them we see beauty again and again when we care for others instead of harming them when we pray for them and provide for them oh what beauty we see being a part of the church is a joy because I get the privilege of seeing beauty when we all work together if you're not a part of any of that you might not have opportunity to see that as much It's kind of funny because once again this week, somebody decided to take us up on the challenge from a couple weeks ago, and they came to one of the dinners, and they helped serve. I said, thanks for coming and serving. I said, that was fun. I know. Why do you think I do this job? Because there are moments that are a blast. Not all of them, but many of them. As you watch the leaves flutter to the ground this week. Remember God's beauty in creation. But remember that God's beauty is masked. By so much of what we do. And one day. One day. We will see it the way it was designed to be seen. Let's pray. Father God we pray this day that you would help us through the power of your Holy Spirit, to catch a glimpse, a glimpse of who you're calling us to be, a glimpse of of how you want us to be, a glimpse of what it might look like when we allow sin to be set aside and grace to be applied, when we allow your Holy Spirit to rule and reign in our lives that we might care for, speak, and love like we were intended. We ask this in the name of the Christ. Amen and amen. We just had a number on the screen. Perhaps you folks at home saw that. We'll just give it to you one more time. If you have any questions about how you may walk deeper 
in this relationship with, with Christ who stood in for us, then call that number and leave a message. One of us will get back to you. Now, today, continue to reflect on what you've heard. Respond to the Holy Spirit that's speaking to you. If something is churning inside, that's God's Spirit speaking to you. Altar railing is open. Make your heart open. God's heart is open for you. As we sing, let's stand. In Christ alone, my hope is God, we are thankful today that you loved us so much that you sent your Son so that in your Son, Jesus alone, 
we can find our hope, we can find our salvation, and we can find our eternity secure with you. We give these gifts now, Lord, of offerings, of tithes, of those things that you have given to us. We return a portion and we do it with thanks. It is our worship to you, O oh God, and we ask that you would receive them and you would use them so that others may know the one who came to love and to die for us. In his name, Jesus, we pray. And everyone said, amen. amen. You may be seated. Our uh, hospitality um, offering team will be serving you in a moment. As they come by, you can drop your because you count insert into the plate. And um, I just want to pause to say thank you for just sticking with the ministry of Christ Church with your gifts. Those watching too, you've been faithful, so faithful. And um, on behalf of the church, um, thank you. If you're part of some other church, if you're watching or here, um, we ask you to support your local church first, okay? Thank you. Let us worship with our gifts. you like that song there's more by that artist Keith Green a young man that died when he was about half the age of samurai um, and had an incredible impact on Christian music before his departure from this earth what an amazing artist hey some uh, announcements we want to share with you we're looking for some prayer partners doesn't matter your age um, you can all pray so what we're looking for is to team up um, adults in the congregation with our post high school class and our kids zone preschool to sixth grade so we're going to you know partner you up with someone who's going to be praying for you and ask you to pray for them on a regular basis so if that's something you're interested in let us know and because you count sheet trunk or treat is tomorrow night six to eight in the parking lot i hope some folks are ready to come with their cars decorated to um to entertain and uh, give the kids some enjoyment thursday as we mentioned is church conference at first united methodist at seven o'clock we're going to start at 6.30 with a fellowship time. Hope you can be there. Friday night at 5 o'clock is a spaghetti dinner here at our church. A group of people that are um, going to um, do some mission work in Hispaniola um, are coming to, um, are, are going to provide that dinner. So you don't need to cook Friday night. Just show up here and eat spaghetti. And while you're doing that, we'll have an impact on the people in Hispaniola. Veterans Day is coming up on the 13th, and we're still looking for photos, um, a photo from when they were in active duty, the veterans, and then a photo current to show the difference. We're going to use that in our service. Operation Christmas Child Boxes are due in the next two weeks, and sign-ups for ASP are being taken now. 
you have questions, you can see the Burkharts or Mike Dreves, and they can tell you what you need to know. Lastly, um, two weeks from yesterday, the 729 Out by 9 Saturday morning breakfast is going to take place right here at Christ Church. Um, the speaker this time on the 19th of November will be the husband of Rachel Billingsley. So I hope you come and... Uh... <laughs> Boy, I got him on that one. <laughs> hope you'll come here and next speak. <laughs> Let's sing as we leave. it out. Amen. Hey, go in peace, friends. May the peace of Christ go with you. Amen. Amen.